Amen. Can you just guys just give God a hand clap of praise? God is so awesome, so awesome, so awesome. Yes, he is. Man, I'm excited about what God is doing. And one more time, I just want y'all to get it all out. Can't do something. Let's let's can can we just stand up? Why you stand up? Just give God a great big shout of praise while you stand up. Hallelujah. 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 And we don't do anything else today. We don't make sure we give him what he is worthy of. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Why you guys are standing? Let's, let's, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made, so we shall be glad and rejoice in it. Father, we thank you for just a refreshing anointing right now on the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that the things that you have commanded us to do, that we will do it and do it boldly in the name yes. of Jesus. Father, we thank you that nothing out of my intellect be spoken, but only what you say, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Do what only you can do. Change a life like only you can, oh God. Transform a heart this morning, oh God. A heart that has been callous and cold, oh God. Change that heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Lord, let not a word fall to the ground that you say, but it shall accomplish what you set it out to do. And Father, let the words of my heart and the meditation of my mouth be acceptable unto thee, oh God. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for everything that's taking place, for everything that has already taken place. Yes, God. And Lord, we should be careful to give you the glory and all the believers say, Amen. 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 So did you guys enjoy the series on Dream Big over the last two weeks? Dream Big. Dream Big. We talked about that because I believe that it's important that we dream big. Because, again, as I said throughout that whole series, that average doesn't change anything. And we don't serve an average God. We serve a big God. We serve an amazing God. A God yes. who is able to do it seemingly yes. and abundantly above anything that we can ask, think, or imagine. Anything. He says above it. Whatever you can think, ask, or imagine, I can do more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so because of that, I know that everybody really wasn't. Just, just all like giggly and sold out about it. And so today I want to start a series titled, I Have Decided. Yeah, yeah. I Have Decided. I, have. I believe that we're in a time and a season right now where God is going to put us in a position as to where we're going to have to make a decision about who he is. I believe that we are going to have to make a decision about who he is or who we say he is. I believe that we are truly in that season. I'm going to ask if, if throughout this series, I'll tell you over the next few weeks after each message, I'm going to, two things I'm going to do. One, one thing is, the first thing is this. Is in this series I have decided I want you to take this real personal All right. I want you to take it real personal that this decision that you're about to make the decision that you need to make I want you to take it real personal because decisions dictate destiny Decisions dictate destiny. Decisions dictate the direction that you go in. So the first thing is I want you to take it real personal. Because the decision, again, that you make will determine the trajectory of your life. The second thing is this. After each message, I'm going to be asking you for something. I'm going to be asking you for something. I'm going to be asking you to make a decision about something. After each message. And of course, you know, our overall theme is for everybody, for each and every one of us. For the unbeliever, the decision is 
to decide to have a relationship with Jesus. For the believer is for you to allow him to be Lord of your life. Because even though we believe, even though some of us may have received salvation, simply meaning that he saved us from eternal damnation, meaning that he saved us from the pits of hell, meaning that he saved us from the power of sin, is that sometimes we don't experience the fullness of God because we don't allow him to be Lord. Simply means that he's responsible. And see, that's why a lot of times as believers, like we say Holy Ghost feel, we go into heaven, but we still catch hell here on the earth because we all allow him to be Lord. We don't allow him, simply means that he's responsible. What we want as believers a lot of time is we want God save me from my, save me from the penalty of sin, save me from the power of sin, but we don't allow him to be God. So we say, God, save me, save me. I don't want to go to hell, but Lord, I still want to do it my way. So that's why that's why we introduce a new believer to the Lord. We say, we, we say hey, you see Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Now, also, now with that, we pray that you allow him to be Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we say, hey, we, we introduce you to the family, to the very own family of God. God, and I also want to allow you to be Lord. Meaning that, and that, that word Lord simply means that you are responsible. You're responsible for my life. You're responsible for my needs. You're responsible for everything. Yes. But the challenge is, will you allow him to be God? <laughs> will you allow him to be God? Because how you see God and how you receive God is what you will get from God. Do you see him as Lord, or do you just see him as the carpenter's son? If you see him as the carpenter's son, then you get a carpenter's reward. The Bible says in Matthew 13, 55, it says that, it says that he cannot do many miracles in that place, meaning his own hometown, because they only seen him as the carpenter's son. And it says the only thing he could do was heal a few. But he couldn't do many miracles in that place. If God is not doing miracles in your life, how are you seeing him? Let me get real close to y'all today. Real close, real close. I still love you, though. I still love you. But I believe that we're in a season where we have to make a decision on who God is in our lives. We have to make a decision in this season who God is to us. Yes. That's why I say I want you to take this real personal. I want you to take this real personal. Who is God to you? Who do you see him as? Provider. Provider. Yes, yes. Yeah. Who do you see him as? Who do you see him as? I got a few points. Patrick, while, while I'm doing this, can you can you pull up uh, point number five? I had five points. I just want to make sure I'm going to start on the back one today. I want to make sure you get this one as I'm talking about this. I want to make sure you get this one. Who do you who do you see him as? And that's that's one of my points. I may get to it. If if I didn't, I want to make sure I get to it first. He's still God. He's still God. He is still God. No matter what, no matter the situation that you are in, he is still God. No matter if it's going good, he's still God. Doesn't even matter if he's going bad because he's still God. And what it is, it's easy to make decisions when everything is going good. It's easy to make decisions when the bank account is fat. It's easy to make decisions when you got the big car and the house and, and, and all these things. It's easy to make decisions in those, those times. It's easy. It's easy. It's real easy to make decisions in those times. But what do you do when things are not looking like the picture or how you imagine it? He's still God. Yes. He's still yes. God. Yes. He's still God. Yes. He is still God. Still God. And, and let me let me point this 
out to you real quick the reason why I wanted to just 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 pick it back on number five real quick one one of these points real quick in first Kings 20 and 28 first Kings and 20 first Kings 20 verse 28 first Kings 20 verse 28 first Kings 20 verse 28. First Kings twenty. You can put that now. That's that's it. I'm gonna read this to you guys. You guys write this one down. And if you don't have, I need you to take notes. I need everybody to take notes today. Cause I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you one or two good nuggets that you need to get. First Kings twenty twenty eight. It says this. It says that, and there came a man of God, and he spoke unto the king of Israel and said, the man of God came up and told the king of Israel. This is what the Lord says. It says, because the Arameans think the Lord is God, is a God. Get that. It says, they think the Lord is a God. A God. Signifying that they believe in many gods. They believe in a whole lot of gods. A whole lot of gods. You know, when you read scripture, and, 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 and a lot of times throughout scripture, it explicitly says the God of Abraham, Isaac, Isaac, and Jacob. Or they'll say, or, or it'll say sometimes the God of Israel, signifying that that is the one true living God. That's the true God. So that's why when you read that, it, it, it just boldly uh, claims that, now, this is the real God with the big G. Uh -huh. This one says, the Arameans think the Lord is a God of the hills and not a God of the valleys. Uh, wow. I will deliver this vast army into your hands and you will know I am the Lord. A God of the hills and not a God of the valleys. I will deliver this vast army into your hands, and you will know that I am the Lord. So here's a quick background on that real quick. I need to tell you about this. So, so in that story, you know, King Ahab, we're going to talk about this in just a minute. King Ahab, they came and told him that, hey, the Arameans or the Syrians were going to attack you. And they were outnumbered. Like, it wasn't even fair. It was like one to a thousand. And so really, it was no way that they would win, that, that Israelites would win. And so the only way that it would win was it would take a supernatural act of God to for them to win this victory. Somebody say supernatural. Supernatural, supernatural meaning it can't be measured by science. It goes beyond the natural law of nature, meaning that it's not happening unless God steps in and intervenes. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Where you just need God to step in and do something supernatural, like, like you know that this is not going to happen by your yeah, strength yeah, 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 yeah. or your ability. The only way that this thing is going to happen if God steps off the throne and says, I, I got to do this so it's not going to happen. So, 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 so it's not going to happen. And so God says, I'm going to do this thing where they will know. They will know. You will know that I am the Lord. The one who is sufficient, the one who is responsible, the one who is able to jump over buildings, tall buildings in a single bounce. Yeah, I'm yeah. that God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. I'm, I'm that. And so, and so, but but what what he is saying, but the, the point that he's making right here is back in those days, you know, they people like different religions, they believed in a lot of gods. They had the God of this building, they had the God of the ground, they had the God of the sea, they had the God, they had gods everywhere. So what they were saying was like when 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 things are going good, that's God. That's God. But but you know you get in a valley place that that, that that place where yeah, yeah, yeah. like like everything is going wrong where it's dark where you don't even see a way out where you don't even know how this is gonna happen yeah. he's not God in that place ah. yeah 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 
yeah, yeah. They said, he, 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 mm. he can do that. Like, like when it looks like you're outnumbered, like when it when you got more bills than money, mm -hmm. like when you got more chaos than peace, like when you got more confusion than clarity, like 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 when when like when when it's like more chaos than direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. They said, he said he 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 still God even in that place. Woo! Even in that place. And that's the challenge. We got to make a decision on who God is to you. Mm -hmm. is, is he only God when things are going good? Or is he still God no matter what it looks like? Yes, God. And this 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 ain't even knows, but write this. You can write this one down too. In Daniel three, in Daniel three, that's why the he the three Hebrew boys when they get ready to throw them into the fiery furnace, he says they say they say, O King, O King, we know that our God is able to deliver us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even if he doesn't, even if he doesn't, he's still God. And we know that he is able. So if he doesn't deliver me yeah. from it, it must be a purpose in this thing. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be a purpose in it if he doesn't deliver me. But even if he doesn't, we know that he is able and we know that he can. So who is God to you? Uh. Is, he only, is, is he only God when he's giving you the thing? Or is he still God when he is building your faith? Because that's what the challenges do. Minister Ebony talked earlier about when you ask God for stuff. You got to position yourself. When you ask God for it, how it happens is not up to you. How it happens is not up to you. She says something very powerful. If God is not a God of chaos, he is a God of order. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians. He said he is a God of order, not a God of chaos. So if God gives it to you when you're not in position to receive it, he would be a dysfunctional God. He would be a God of chaos. So God has to build your faith. And most of the time that comes through situations, yeah. that comes through chaos, yeah. that comes through pain, that comes through the, 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 the trials and all those things, that comes through the valley times. He's still God in that place. God never said it would be easy, but he did say, I would never leave you nor forsake you. And so if God is with you, you can't leave. If God is with you, he is able to comfort you during those times. If God is with you, there's no demon, there's no devil, there's not a demonic force that can overtake you because he's God. He's God. He is God. So, I want to welcome everybody here today. God has been waiting to use you. God has been waiting to use you. So let me get to my scripture. Let me get to my scripture. So, so on this whole, this, this, throughout this whole thing is I have decided I want to use two scriptures I want to talk to from. Joshua 24. I want to I want to read it in two versions because I want you to get it. In the NIV, it says this. It says, "But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day, this day, whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods 
Y'all see liturgy. Yeah. Uh -huh. The gods. The gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the boy said, household. Y'all need yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Now I need it. I need to get, read it to you where you really understand it. Let me let me get it in the message version. The message version says this. It says if you decide that it's a bad thing to worship God, then choose a God, little G. Yeah. Then choose a God you rather serve. And it says then do it today. Said so choose one of the gods your choose one of the gods your ancestor worship from the country beyond the river or one of the gods of the Amorites on whose land you you're now living. As for me and my family, we will worship God. Yes. And let me tell you why Joshua was saying that. Joshua before in the preceding verse, he takes a trip down memory lane. In Joshua 1, God taps Joshua on the shoulder and said, hey, my servant, my servant Moses has died. Now you the man. You're going to lead the children of Israel into the land flowing with milk and honey. Yes. And so all throughout through Joshua 1 and Joshua 23, they go in, they take the land of the giants, they conquer, they do all these things. They win battles they're not supposed to win. They win battles where it's like three of them and like a million of uh, armies of, of the uh, Canaanites and Amorites and all these people. It's like a million of them and, and like three Israelites. But they win the battle. Right. Somebody says supernatural. supernatural. And you know why they happen? Because God spoke it and it was so. Yeah. And so something supernatural had to win happen. So he says that I'm going to do this so that they will know, you will know that I am God. So Joshua, before this, takes them a trip down memory lane, tells them all this stuff. Hey, you remember when Moses split the Red Sea for you? And then you know how when we before we go into the land of uh, Canaan, that, that he also allowed you to walk through the Jordan on dry land? Do you remember all those things? Then he tells them, do you remember the battles that, that you weren't supposed to win, that it was no way by science and on paper that was supposed to happen? Yeah. Do you remember when you didn't have money to pay those bills, but somehow the light still stayed on? Yeah. Do you remember when you didn't have the yeah. money to pay the car notes, but you still riding around in the car right now? Do you yeah. remember when you didn't have the money to pay your mortgage, but you still got a roof over your head? Do yeah. you remember all those times? So Joshua takes him down a trip of memory lane of all these things that the Lord had did, had provided because he's a provider. provider yeah. He takes him down a trip of memory lane because that's, you, whenever you're in one of those decisions where you don't know if God is with you, remember the patterns of God. Yeah. That, that's what Joshua was doing. Yeah. He said, look, look at his pattern. You may not feel him right now. Yeah. You may not recognize him right now. You may even not can hear from him right now. So, so what do you do? You look at the patterns of God. Look who he has been all throughout. That's why Hebrews 13, 8 says he's a, he's a never changing God. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Look at his pattern. He says nothing can separate you from the love of God. He says I'm going to always be your provider if you allow me to be. I always be your peace if you allow me to be. I always be your victory if you allow me to be. I always be I am that I am if you allow me to be. God, 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 he, he pats himself on the back and, 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 and challenges you. Look at my track record. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, look at my track record. Have I ever lost a battle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have I ever not met your need? And then you have to, then you begin to, no, no, no. Have I, have I, have I? Now, now the challenge is when he asked you that question, you were like, well, not when I wanted you to. But he said, no, I met it right on time. Right, right in the, the, the 11th hour, right in the bottom of the ninth inning, God steps in and says, I got you. You just wanted him to meet you in the first ending. 
But he steps in and gives it to you right where you need it because yeah. he's a God of order. Yeah. He gives it to you right where you need it. Right where you need it. So Joshua sets this up. He sets them up real good. He said, you remember all that? You remember when that happened? Do 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 you remember when that happened? And then he said, okay, now since you remember all that, now choose you this day. Which God are you going to serve? The big G or the little G? The one who is able to do supernatural things or the one who's just a natural thing made of wood and clay and all these things that man makes and, mm. and you just sit down and worship. Mm, 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 mm. Because that's what he was talking about. Again, in those days, that it was many gods. But here's the challenge. Those gods that they served, their, their belief was they could only perform in certain situations. That's why he said the God of the hills or the God of the valley. Because they can only perform in certain situations like the God of the sea. He can only perform in the sea. The God on the mountain, he can only perform there. The God of the valley, he can only perform there. The, 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 this God can only perform there. But, he, but Joshua was saying, we serve a God who's sovereign. He's limitless. Yeah. Like he can do anything and anywhere. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. That, God. that God. So he says, choose today. Choose today. He says, just, just, just make a decision. Whether it's gonna be God with the big G or God with the little G. But he, he said, just choose one of them. Let's make a choice. Let's make a choice. Somebody say, I have decided. I have decided. I have decided. The second, the second scripture I wanna I wanna use in this campaign, I have decided. <laughs> come from pull my second one up. First Kings 18:21. I love this one right here. This is one of my, like my, my, my one of my favorite stories in the Bible. This, you know how in Elijah he tell he tells uh, Ahab and Jezebel, hey, you get your four hundred fifty uh, false prophets and bring the other four hundred. So he says, there's eight hundred fifty y'all. There's one of me, and whichever Lord answers by God answers by fire and burn up this offering, then that's the true God, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I love that. So, so, so in First Kings eighteen twenty one, it says Elijah went before the people and said, y'all got to get this, this is powerful right here. He's starting to, he said, how long will you waver between two opinions? How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, that's, that's the false God. Yeah, it says follow him. Says, but the people said nothing. <laughs> but the people said nothing. And the same thing in this one. If you read this one, Elijah takes the people down a, a trip of memory, memory lane as well. He talks about all the things that God did, all the, the powerful God, like he did all these things. And he says, How long? How long? How long? No, a lot said that, but I'm talking to you. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. How long? How long? How long? How long? How long will you waver between two opinions? How long? How long? How long will you waver between two opinions? He said, how long will you listen to the ways of the world? How long? How long will you listen to the false god, the little G? How long? 
Will you waver between two opinions? You know that word wavering simply means that you're not stable. How it is, you know how how sometimes we make God bipolar. We come up, we get a word from the Lord. We say, God told me this, and I know what He said. All right, all right. And we got a zeal, like we take off, like we we're excited, we're doing this thing, and then we meet up with challenge right here. We meet up with lack right here. We meet up with this giant right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We meet up with, with anything that doesn't look like God. We said, oh, okay, maybe that wasn't God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, I don't know, Pastor D. I mean, like, he, well, I felt like he was saying that three minutes ago. I'm talking about not, not even 24 hours, like three minutes ago. Three minutes ago, I was on fire. I was smoking. Like, I'm ready to serve. I'm ready to go all out for God. I'm ready to just, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to just, just run through this wall. But as soon as, as soon as we encounter the wall, as soon as we come up to the wall, we say, maybe, maybe, I'm a, maybe I'll do it this way. But God, if God told you to run through the wall, why you why why you gotta try and go another way? If God said it, it is not on you how the wall comes down, He might just tell you to walk around the wall and just shout. But you're trying to take a hammer and knock down the wall, which takes a lot of it takes a lot of might. When, see, when you grab a hammer to knock down, that's that's all you. That's all you. When you, I'm going to get a crowbar, I'm going to get whatever, I'm going to bring in uh, 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 one of these machines that's knocked down the wall. But what if God tells you to walk around the wall seven times and just says, at this time, shut And the wall is come, coming down. I'm talking about something supernatural. What if he tells you to do it that way? What if he tells you to do it that way? as that wall comes, we meet up with that wall. Maybe that was not God. Maybe he told me to do it that way. Maybe he told me that I don't need to be here. Maybe he told me I don't need to be in that situation. Maybe he told me that I don't need to be a job at that job. Maybe he told me all that. Maybe. How long will you waver between, between two opinions? How long? How long? How long? We will all come to a pivotal point if we are not there already. Well, you got to make a decision. And sometimes, even if decision is a is the wrong decision, at least you made it. Even if it's the wrong one, at least you made it. Even if it is, I guarantee you, if you're humble enough to tell God, God, I made the wrong, I made the wrong decision, God will honor that. But, but Elijah said they said nothing. They didn't say nothing. Nothing. I have decided. Sometimes we just sit back and we just we just wait on we just wait on God to do everything. Mm. And God is requiring you to do some things as well. God is requiring you to put your hand to the plow as well. There's a story, there's a story once once told I heard they said that it was a man, older man, he was sitting on his porch and he heard about a flood was coming. And it says that the water begins to rise and water got up to the porch and says this truck came by and they said, hey sir, come again in with us and we'll take you to safety. And the man says, I'm just waiting on God. God will save me. All right. 
And it says that, that the water kept rising and he gets up to his second floor of his house and looks out the window and a boat comes by. And the people from the boat stop and say, sir, get in. We want to take you to safety. And the man replies, God will save me. I'm just going to wait on God. And the water kept rising, kept rising. It gets up to the roof, and he's on top of the roof. And somebody in a helicopter comes by and drops a line down and says, Sir, grab the line. We want to take you to safety. And the man replied, God will save me. I'm just going to wait on God. And eventually, yeah, it ain't sad. The man died. And he gets to heaven, and he asks God, 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 I thought you was going to save me. I put my trust in you. I thought you was going to save me. And God replied, I sent you a boat. I sent you a truck. I sent you a helicopter. What more do you want me to do? All right. What more do you want me to do? Sometimes when God sends us the blessing, it's not going to look like you thought it would look. Right. It's not going to look like you imagined it to be. All right. But you got to make a decision just because it doesn't look good, just because it doesn't feel good, just because it didn't come how I imagined, just because I asked you for patience and you sent somebody to just get on my last nerve. I didn't want it that way. Just because I, I wanted to be wealthy, you had to, you, you, like you did it backwards, you had to show me what lack felt like so when I got the wealth, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Just because I, I, I wanted more faith and, and I asked you to build my faith and I began to go through situations and trials that I didn't like that wasn't comfortable, I didn't want it like that. All right. got to make a decision. I want to leave you with four things real quickly. Real quickly. You got to understand that in this season God is requiring you some decisions that you will have to make or mandatory. You're not just going to be able to sit back and say nothing or do nothing. I believe we're in a, in, a, in a season right now where so much is going on. The world is offering so much that you have to make a decision. Yes. Which God will you serve? Yes. And some of us are in situations where... Um, there's trials, there's situation, it's chaos, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First thing you got to re realize is this, when making that decision is, this is my first point. God's plans for your life are greater than the problems you go through. God's plans for your life are greater than the problems you go through. I had to give you scripture for that. I would take you to Joshua 27. I'm sorry, Joshua 24. Joshua 24, verses 7 through 13. You can write that down and go back and look at it. Joshua 24, verses 7 through 13. So real quick it says, but, but they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. There's this is the part where, again, where, where Joshua is, is taking them down a trip of memory lane. Where God had did everything for them. He, he, he says that, like, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. This is where when Moses get to the Red Sea, it says that the angel that, that guided them by day in a, in a cloud and a pillar of fire by night, it says that he left from the front of them and went to the back of them. And it says that he put darkness to the Egyptians, but he made it light for the Israelites. It says that he brought you to the sea over, over them and it covered them, not you. You saw with your eyes what I did to the Egyptians. 
And it says, then you lived in the wilderness for a long time, long time. It says, I brought you to a land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them before you, and you took possession of their land. God is going to give you possession of things that you don't have the ability to do. God is going to give you some possessions that your, your, your resources, none of those things are going to be able to get, but God is going to do it for you. God is going to give you possession yes. of the things that you're not qualified, qualified. for. Yes, but because he has qualified you, you will possess them. Thank you, Father. Number two. God's purpose for your life is greater than your pain you go through. Yes. God's purpose for your life Notice what I said, God's purpose for your life. Not your purpose, God's purpose for your life is greater than the pain you go through. If I had to give you a scripture for that, I would talk about Joshua 24 and 15. Just write it down. Go back and right now just trust me. But you can go back, you can go back and study it for yourself. Joshua 24 and 15. If you're serving the Lord, seeing it undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond you, pray to you, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose lands you're living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Because sometimes it is a challenge. It seems like it's a real challenge to serve God. Because sometimes it seems like you're going to be missing out on some things. But just know that when serving God, God is a God of multiplication. So it, when it seems like you are losing God, it's actually setting you up for a multiplication. Third thing is this. You got to know that all things work together for the good. That's Romans 8, 28. It doesn't say all things would be good. That's what you got to get. It didn't say all things would be good. It said, but they will work out for your good. The fourth thing is this. Be thankful in all things. says be thankful in all things. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 8 and 9 it says that it's in those times that God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. He says your grace, his grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 8 and 9 and then 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 it says give thanks to God for this is the will of God for your life in Christ Jesus. I'm going to repeat those real quick because I want you to get them. First thing was God's plans for your life. Remember what I said. This is not your plan. God's plan. God's plan for your life are greater than the problems you go through. Number two, God's purpose for your life is greater than the pain you go through. God's purpose for your life is greater than the pain you go through. Number three, all things work together for the good. Doesn't say all things would be good, but it works for your good. And number four, be thankful in all things. Don't be thankful for the chaos. Don't be thankful for the issues, but be thankful that God is in it with you. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. I just want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, that on today, we make a decision. We make a decision to follow you. We make a decision to stand on your word. Father, sometimes, if we be honest, it's not comfortable. If we be honest, God, sometimes we don't want to go through it. Lord, if we be honest, oh God, we we it's, it's, it, we feel like it's too much to bear. Sometimes, Lord, we even voice it. But through it all, through it all, you are still God. Father, 
be the first one to say, I can't tell you how many times that I've quit. We quit. But once we are sold out for you, we be get right back in line with who you are and what you say. That your plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. So, Father, we thank you that because we have decided, we know that all things will work for our good. And quitting is not an option. It's not an option. It's not an option. So, Father, we thank you that in those times of weakness that your strength is made perfect. And you are still God. God of the mountain and the hill. And you are still God in the valley below. And so we bless you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen.